Welcome to View Little Week 22. It's Eddie Murphy Week. Nobody told me there'd be a dragon. It's Eddie Murphy Month. It's Eddie Murphy Month. We made it to Eddie Murphy Month. Uh, we just finished our double feature. We watched Doolittle 2020, and then we watched Doctor Doolittle 1998 back to back. I'm Finn. I'm, Frank's across I'm Frank. from me. <laughs> did we not do that? We did not do that. Okay. Well, we're here. Very, so our plan today is just to talk about Dr. Duo, the Eddie Murphy one. And we're going to try to not make a whole lot of comparisons, I think, in this one. And right. we'll try to save them for the next one. It might be kind of difficult because there are a number of parallel moments. And very, very quickly before we get into that, what were your thoughts on Doolittle today? I don't have a lot of thoughts on it today. Just that we pretty much talked along to the whole movie, just running through the the quotes and we talked through ways that we would rewrite it as we usually do yep. <laughs> and came up with a good plan for it i think but you know <laughs> we'll save that for another time yeah. uh did you enjoy no not really did you recommend it i don't recommend it okay. except in the context of this double feature it was interesting to watch them back to back and i think it sort of works as a back-to-back -back, like as a, as a curated experience it kind of is yeah interesting and fun to see them both it is surprising how many comparisons we could make between the two and like it's very weird how similar they are sort of yeah like the the character is kind of similar especially knowing that the dr murphy doc, dr murphy dr doolittle eddie murphy version of john doolittle the only thing that they took really was the uh talking to animals yeah. component even it, it says based on uh the works of hugh lofting or whatever but it's yeah. really just like the character of dr doolittle being able to talk to animals that's the only thing that they really pulled in yeah in the context of watching dr doolittle after it i do recommend doolittle yeah uh, in the context of watching it almost 90 times i do not recommend yeah, it yeah that's yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, think that's, I think that's fair anyway yeah. uh so yeah what were your thoughts on dr doolittle i'm conflicted about it there's a part of me that really wants to like it and there's parts of it that i really like but it also falls to the lowest level a lot by just making butt and fart and poop and yeah it's sort of frustrating because of that because <laughs> it's like oh you're actually kind of have a fun movie and a premise yeah one of my predictions from last week is that there's going to be a hundred jokes per minute and about half of them were, would land and towards like the middle part of the movie that's a hundred percent true but like the first 20 minutes of the movie were really really funny and really good yeah and I enjoyed it a lot, and I don't know how much that is because of we watched Doolittle prior to it. This is this is something I'm going to record really fast that's going to go at the start. Okay. Just a note for everyone that there will be spoilers for Dr. Doolittle 1998 <laughs> Eddie Murphy in this episode. Any of you big doo-doo heads out there. <laughs> And there will also be spoilers for Doolittle 2020. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. As in every episode, just a friendly PSA. I'm now going to read the synopsis of Dr. Doolittle. Dr. John Doolittle has the world in his hands, a beautiful wife at his side, two adorable daughters, and a career that could not go better. One night, he nearly runs over a dog with his car. The dog yells bonehead and disappears. From then on, his childhood ability is back to communicate with animals. Unfortunately, the word of Doolittle's ability is spreading quickly. Soon, many animals from rat to horse flock to his place to get medical advice. But his colleagues suspect he's going mad. And as the, and as the clinic Doolittle used to work for is about to be takeover... It's about to be... Okay, this was written by some idiot. <sighs> The grammatical errors. I worked really hard on that synopsis, right? Yeah, I know you did. And as the clinic doodle used to work for is about to be taken over for a huge amount of money, many decisions have to be made. Believe him, put him into a mental institution, sell the clinic, but also his family is close to breaking apart until a circus tiger. This is a really bad synopsis. I'm not going to insert that at all. Okay. I forgot that on IMDb, anybody can write stuff. A doctor discovers that he can communicate with animals. One day, there's a doctor. The next day, is he crazy? <laughs> <laughs> That's really good. <laughs> yeah, thank you. No, I'm on IMDb. No, I'm kidding. I guess we should mention real quick just some of the basic basic facts of 
yeah. of the movie here. It was directed by Betty Thomas. Uh, the screenplay was by Larry Levin and Nat Malden. The cinematography is by Russell Boyd. And it was distributed by 20th Century Fox. Originally released in theaters June 26, 1998, with a runtime of 85 minutes. The budget, just sort of interesting, $71.5 million. The box office, $294.4 million. So, a box office success, even though the reception to it wasn't necessarily the greatest. Yeah. Mostly because of the bathroom humor that it fell to this movie was also pg-13 was it yeah that's it makes sense that it's pg-13 but it's also surprising that it's pg-13 yeah it must have been after gremlins 2 right that was the big movie that did that but uh of noteworthy russell boyd uh is oscar winning yeah it came after though right for the cinematography and then the cast is pretty good like it's they got a bunch of comedians who were well known at the time a lot of familiar names yeah that aren't really big actors and then there's a lot of like industry working like character actors who have been in a lot of movies the director went through second city in chicago so there's a lot of comedy connections it feels like a 90s comedy yeah like it it very much has the style and the the um signposts of that gain off of like that the the very first thing that like was like big to me is that eddie murphy is just funny everything he says he does in a like he's not making jokes he's just being like casually funny and that's really good in a, in a weird 90s comedy you don't really see that yeah <laughs> like not everything's a punchline but he is like effortlessly funny and and that's what most do little movies need. <laughs> that's what do little needs. I want to compare it, but I'll try not to. And that was like the big thing. Uh, the basic plot is it starts off with a really funny intro uh, narrated by Norm MacDonald. And like it shows, oh, Ossie Davis plays his dad, his dad, which is another big get. And yeah it's like he could talk to animals and then there's a scene where he gets uh uh, reverend comes in to exercise the demons from him because he could talk to dogs and that whole scene is funny and then they take away take his dog away which is ellen degeneres and then it goes to the the present time and he's like a big time doctor who cares about money and from there after the intro of showing that he can he could talk to animals as a kid and then uh, he sort of shuts that away because of the trauma of the experience of his dog being taken away. It goes to like a family drama where it's showing Doolittle navigating, uh, working at a clinic and juggling his family, the clinic, and this impending buyout of the clinic by like big corporate medical. And it's all really well done. <laughs> like the first 20 minutes are like a good movie. Yeah. Prior to him talking to animals, it's just pretty funny. The way he talks to his fa- family about like her pet uh, guinea, guinea pig, pig. Yeah. and like all that is just hilarious. The setup of his daughter being sort of an outcast that comes back later, and uh, his like aversion to animals, right? Because, <laughs> due to trauma. <laughs> There's not, like, any jokes to pinpoint in that scene, like, in the first 20 minutes either, because they're not, like, punchlines or anything. It's mostly just funny family drama stuff. Yeah. One of the, like, secondary villains, sort of, is... The character's name is Mark. I'm going to tell you who plays him here in a second. Oliver Platt. And he's, like, a... He cares about money and nothing else, and it's really funny. He's one of the doctors (laughs) who works with him at the clinic. Works with john eddie murphy at the yeah there's uh three main doctors there's uh eddie murphy there's mark and then there's gene and mark is like the guy who wants money and gene is the guy who doesn't care about money and And then eddie murphy thinks that the the clinic is losing its way by selling out to corporate yeah and eddie murphy is sort of the on the fence on the fence in between the two where he wants the money because it'll make his life easier yeah and his family's life easier he thinks you see where this is going no i saw where this was going (laughs) yeah yeah none of it's very surprising no but it's it's fun because of eddie murphy because of of eddie murphy (laughs) and also because of 
uh, once he has this experience of almost hitting a dog with his car yeah. and then going through that, like a reawakening this ability in him that he's able to talk to animals and the overwhelming sense of fear that that would bring on <laughs> from constantly hearing all of these creatures chittering at you, like being able to understand what animals say. I think they did a really good job of like building that yeah. as like a horror <laughs> like it really would be frightening to go through that there's like a lot of funny overwhelming scenes like when he goes into like a dog pound and it's yeah. just noise. like it's just people talking because there's so many dogs in there yeah. there's also so many good like one-off jokes he's like driving and there's a dog with its face up to a car next to it and just says i love you and that's, that's like the joke and there's like a bunch of stuff like that that is like mixed in but the, what brings all that down is the buddy. <laughs> right. Sort of. Yeah. Some of it's yeah. buddy. <laughs> Some of it is. It's just that it's overwhelming. <laughs> There's a lot of it. Because a lot of butt jokes, a lot of inserting things in butt jokes. I was really disappointed in that. I think it's because like the trauma <laughs> of the dragon scene from Doolittle 2020. And then oh my God. this movie is just full of... So he almost hits a dog and then that sort of starts the plot of... Um, he can talk to animals and like it just starts off with him being like overwhelmed with everything and tr juggling spending time with his family on the same weekend that the deal for the clinic to sell sell is trying to go through on the same weekend that he can now talk to animals the side plot is his daughter feels like an outcast and he's trying to encourage her to go to summer camp and like be normal because that's right. what his father did to him uh, basically, he's overwhelmed. They, he ends up going to the cabin with his family. He spends the night so he can go to the meeting with the people, which doesn't go well because he's talking to pigeons. <laughs> and then he meets, we meet the guinea pig. The guinea pig is Chris Rock. And what did you think of him? Because I thought the guinea pig kind of sucked. Yeah, you know, <laughs> it's a bit much. He's very much... Uh... He, yeah, he sucked. <laughs> One thing, uh, another thing that I feel like, it felt like a lot of the people voicing the animals were improv -ing. I don't know. Maybe. I thought there was a lot of improv for animals. Uh, not, uh, so Norm MacDonald's the main dog. So, he, like, all of his jokes are written. But, like, a lot of the side animals just talking. Like, the rats. And then, like, Chris I Rock. Know. Like I, I, think... I feel like a lot of his stuff was improv. I'm honestly not sure, just because we should probably mention the way the animals are. Jim Henson's company did the puppets, yeah. so there's a number of animatronics mixed with real animals. And for and the most part, I could not tell. <laughs> they, um, The way that they did the mouths of the real animals, they did like 2D imaging stuff yeah. where they took stills of the actual animals like opening and closing their mouths mm -hmm. and used that to overlay into the scenes themselves. And it mostly, like, the mouth movements and everything, it mostly worked okay, I think. It, it looks really good yeah. for a talking animal movie. And I think, you know, so much of it is that they're they're using real animals, and that's probably helpful to them. And the, the animatronics, they match up pretty well. Yeah. Like, there are some points where the dog looks particularly grungy. <laughs> or the rat in the fart scene. Yeah. And then, so, Eddie Murphy... Goes back to the cabin. He's with his family. There's an owl there who like talks to him. The owl is also a big name. Jenna Elfman is the owl, who who was big at the time. And then he like helps her out. Like he does like a doctor thing. Like she has something stuck in her wing. Uh, and then from there she tells all the animals, and that's kind of what sets up the rest of the plot. He immediately leaves because he's freaked out because he's hearing all these animals. And then he meets back up with the dog and adopts him. I think part of why it works so well is that as this sort of top of his class medical doctor, if he were to suddenly be able to talk to animals, his reaction would be, I need to go get a CAT scan. I need yeah. to, like, what is wrong with my brain? Like, <laughs> you know, and, yeah. and they go through all of that. Like, also on Eddie Murphy, the fact that, like, when the animals talk to him at first he just like casually responds and it's so natural and it's, yeah. it, i think that's like what carries this movie is that he's so good yeah <laughs> he's very charismatic and everything he does just seems naturally because 
again, he's not like he's making a lot of jokes. They're just like side comments. And yeah, I wish he was in more movies. I miss <laughs> once him. The, uh, once the word gets out to the other animals, that there's a person who can understand them and help them out. Uh, they all show up at his house. They all seek him out because they want him to deal with their medical issues, solve their problems. Uh, so when he picks up, oh, and there's a really fun montage of him helping all of these yeah. animals and they like invade his house or his yeah. apartment. Uh, there's, I think the, fr- there's some weird butt scenes. Uh, yeah, there's, a there's lot some of weird, weird jokes. There's a lot of weird butt scenes. There's a lot of weird sex jokes too. Yeah. It's very much, you were, you were saying, is this a kid's movie? <laughs> and I'm saying, no, <laughs> it's not really a kid's movie. It's a movie you would take your kid to and then be like, oh, maybe I shouldn't it off. Yeah. I hope my kid doesn't get this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> because it definitely, the audience is not kids, but it kind of is. It's a talking animal movie and the, his daughter like the inspirational story with his daughter is sort of like a yeah. a kid friendly thing but there's a lot of open like sex jokes yeah. not like trying to hide it for you from right. your kid right but then also like the all the fart humor like also makes it seem like it's for a kid right but then there's a lot of like shoving things in butt stuff. <laughs> yeah. So the sort of the scene we're talking to is there's this dragon, <laughs> right? <laughs> no, uh, the the dog he names Lucky. Um, he like brings him to get a checkup because he doesn't Lucky doesn't want to leave him. And Lucky is blaming him for hitting him with the car. <laughs> yeah. So sort of like as a favor. And you know? Jeffy or Jeffy Jeffrey Tambor is the vet, and. But, uh, he's checking the dog out. He takes his temperature with the thelo- He puts a thermometer in the dog's butt, and the dog is talking to Doolittle this whole time. Like, don't let him do this to me. Yeah, <laughs> it's very uncomfortable. And then he's like, "My butt's swallowing the thermometer. <laughs> it's going to be lost." Which is, <laughs> it's funny, but it's also not. It's not. And then, and then, Jeffrey is like giving him. He's like, "You're not. You're a doctor. You're not a vet. Like, I went to vet school for this." And then he's like, "Yeah, but I think that you've lost your thermometer." <laughs> yeah. Good joke. And then not he, good, he but good. he's like, "We could do surgery. Good. We could do laxative." And he's like, "Well, let's go with the lax." He's like, "Well, that n- never works." <laughs> So they puts on a latex glove, and that's the scene. And then the dog walks funny. Great. Yeah. Wonderful. Great. Awful. See, that's one butt joke, and that's fine. <laughs> Is Probably, it? it? It's not. It's, it's not. It, it, it's too long, and it's really uncomfortable. <laughs> uh, prior to this, there's this lady, one of his like human patients eats shellfish, and she's allergic to shellfish. And that was a funny bit. It's a recurring bit that comes back multiple times. And most of the bit, half of the bit is that she's dumb and eats shellfish and crab and lobster. She can't, she's addicted to this stuff, but it makes her break out and like expand. The other half of her character is being like a fat person joke. Yeah. And it's sort of, she's not, that was the the weird thing. She's like a big butt. Yeah. It's a big (laughs) butt joke. Yeah. So he's like called in late at night, the treater, and she's like, he has to give her a shot on her butt and he looks like directly into it. And that's the joke. And that was uncomfortable too. Well, and then she sits on the guinea pig later. Yeah. So it's sort of like her that, character is to be a giant stupid butt. That's a good character in, in any movie. It's a giant stupid butt. It was funny though because <laughs> this is a lot later in the movie. She's like sneaking into the bathroom because for some reason she's invited to their big like press conference. And she snuck into the bathroom and she pulls a crab out of the purse to eat it. Yeah. That part was funny. She's eating crab on the toilet and then the guinea pig's in the toilet. And yeah, looks up her butthole. And that's the joke. Uh, the last plot is that there's a tiger that is sick uh, because he's like treating all these animals. Uh, one of them is this alcoholic monkey. And he tells him about this circus tiger who's who had, has migraines and, and wants to kill himself. Yeah. And that whole scene was pretty funny he's going to jump off of a tower and him and the dog go up there and try to talk him down they do and then the tiger agrees to like wait for his help and that's the other plot is he's trying to help the tiger so you have a tiger that needs surgery on his brain and you have doolittle who's 
family and coworkers think is insane because he's talking to animals. Um, and you have the coworkers trying to keep Doolittle uh, sane so that they can sell for millions of dollars to the big corporate health group. And then the last plot is he's trying to connect with his daughter. Well, right. his daughter's trying to connect with him. It all connects together surprisingly well. It does because it's not a lot of it's interwoven. Like him going insane. It sounds busy the way that we've talked through it. And I don't think we've done a great job of <laughs> explaining it. That's jumping because around a bit, but it does work. I feel like separating the acts would be a good way to like do that. Because like the first act is like the family stuff and then him like discovering his ability. The second act is him utilizing it. Coming to terms with it, being afraid of it. And then juggling it with everything else. And then uh, he's committed into a mental, mental hosp hospital. That's like, yeah, that's like the conclusion of the second act is him yeah. getting out of the mental hospital. And then the third act is all the pieces coming together. Yeah. So like the him trying to save the tiger, real, like it's conclusions to all the arcs. Yeah. His family being present. Honestly, I really liked it. <laughs> I think it's a 6 out of 10, but I... I think that's fair. I really, really enjoyed this movie. I thought, for the most part, it was funny. There's a lot of jokes that... There's a lot of accents that aren't great. There's, yeah, there's... <laughs> it's some a questionable, There's some questionable humor. Uh, or it's questionable attempts at humor. Mostly relating to bathrooms, a lot of it. <laughs> <laughs> One of accents. the predictions we got wrong is... Or Frank got right was the rips per minute. Um, yep. I thought there was going to be a lot more fart jokes, and I was wrong. So if we would have done butt jokes, there were over ten. There were way more. There, if we if we had made it butt jokes or bathroom humor or something, yeah, the BPM there would have, there would have been it would have been <laughs> extreme. <laughs> bathroom been so jokes high. per minute. The BPM. Yeah. Had a high resting BPM been through the roof. <laughs> there were so many. <laughs> but just farts actually happening. The rips, the rips per minute, the rips on screen. There were six, six, six or six seven. Yeah. Perhaps seven, definitely six. There was five or five to six all in one scene. Right. And that it was, was the, the scene you the talked rat about. The scene that I remembered. Which was yeah. actually perfect. It was entirely correct. Yeah. I had it perfectly memorized. One thing that's funny about that scene. So he like... He's like walking into his office and the rats are complaining. So he brings them in and he's just like nonchalantly treating them like they're humans while his coworkers watch and him. And wife, yeah. And wife. And it's really funny. <laughs> yeah. Because it's like, oh, he has gone insane. Because he, like, is, he is very much just, you know, being a doctor. He's treating this sick patient. And he's acting like there's nothing strange about what he's doing. Like he's completely... Yeah. <laughs> And it's really funny. This guy needed help. And there were too many parts in that scene. There were five or six. Yeah, five to six. Yeah. And then there was a fart earlier in the movie, I think. There was, and I don't remember what the reason for it was, but it was like, was that? Yeah. Yeah, pretty sure it was. So six, two, seven, give or take. Which is really disappointing. <laughs> I Predictions for Dr. Doolittle 2 is the RPM is going to go way up. <laughs> <laughs> we'll find out. Do Dr. Doolittle 2 in two weeks, which I'm excited for because I don't know that I've ever watched it. Yeah. After seeing this, and I don't have any other Dr. Doolittle memories other than what's in this movie. Yeah, so, same for me. I remember the poster. There's a bear on the poster, and I remember that. Oh, actually, yeah. That's where the bear is, isn't it? Yeah. So maybe I probably have seen it. Never mind. What was like any memorable moments that we haven't mentioned that you want to talk about? Um, the tiger surgery itself. I wrote down that that was like a really good. It's your pretty standard the 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 setup for it. I guess it's pretty standard, like good guys versus bad corporate. Yeah, like the moment that you know the realization of oh we're we've gone away from our roots. Mm -hmm. We should be caring for our patients and our community and not chasing money. And this is what we originally signed up for. This is how. This is the reason that we do what we do type of stuff. And it was a good like end set piece. Like it to compare it to do a little briefly, like if it would have been the dog scene with the thermometer in the butt as the end, like that's not great. <laughs> yeah, but, right, right. but it being like brain yeah, surgery and with like help from his assistant 
and his wife is there to like calm the tiger like everyone in the scene has something to do and they're all like really calm about it it's great Yep. It's kind of silly. Uh, the tiger feels where his tumor is or whatever. Right. Like, He's able to say, oh, that's that's where it is. Oh, that's the tumor. <laughs> yeah. The, the clot or whatever. The the whole surgery, that part is kind of bad. Right. The the actual medical side of it. <laughs> yeah. It's, and yeah. the idea that, like, you know, you could apply doctor or human physiology, the animal physiology doesn't really work too well. Like, that's not true. Animal physiology is pretty different, especially when you but get... But if you can talk to them. <laughs> yeah. Another thing is there was only... Uh, well, there were birds, but it was mostly mammals. Yeah, pigeons, owls. Should we run through all the critters? You know what? I don't think there was a single cold-blooded animal except for the end. There's the alligator at the end. A lot of endotherms. Yeah, and I guess that's fair because all of the animals that you see are have an explanation to them yeah. for being there. You know, they go out to the woods for camping and there's all the woodland critters that you would expect. They go, when he's in the city, it's all like the city rats and pigeons and dogs uh, and cats. No cockroaches, though. Yeah, no, no bugs, bugs. No bugs. Which, you know, good because the bugs are the usually bad <laughs> so <laughs> i i mean from like a practical standpoint i think it's probably easier to, to work with all the other animals that it is i wonder they probably were limited i wonder if in the original doolittle books if he can talk to bugs well there's a snail that's true but it's a giant snail oh. because the reality is like if you were a person who could talk to animals and suddenly like gained the ability to talk to all the animals for how many bugs there are in the world? Definitely. It would be definitely, like you would go actually insane because you would have millions of ants yelling at you. <laughs> like yeah. you'd be able to hear, you know, it'd be too much. Uh, I mean, the new Doolittle gets around that by like making him not just like magically understand animals. Right. Yeah. He does because there's no way he can do all what he does in the moment. But the idea is that he's actually speaking Having to them to, in their own right, languages. Right. I guess it works that, like, you know, an ant's so small it probably can't project its voice very far. Yeah. So there would it would have been fun to see like a scene where like mosquitoes or like a swarm of bugs and because like a noble scene was like the dog pound. I love that scene so much pounds, because it was just like, like a, a cacophony. A jail. Yeah. <laughs> very much uh, sort of prison tropes. There was a lot of good jokes in that. Yeah, there were. It's a lot of stuff like. Uh, fresh meat or like, yeah you know i'm i'm gonna mess you up or something <laughs> uh let's see any other big moments that you remember notable moments notable moments i've been jumping around a lot but the intro is really really good and i like that a lot i like the aussie davis like stern dad <laughs> i love the the exorcism scene was really funny the boy sniffing the principal's butt because the yeah. dog tells him he asked the dog why do dogs sniff each other's butts and the dog says it's how they greet each other and then eddie murphy john doolittle as a little boy sniffs the principal's butt when he gets introduced to him and then there's which is, a, which is a a butt joke it's a really dumb butt joke and it's also the moment that the father is like embarrassed by his son. Yeah. The father Paul also comes full circle with it does. Uh his like it gets a nice resolution. A Murphy's daughter is talking to uh Ossie Davis about like I just feel like he doesn't understand me. Like I, I liked him when he could talk to animals because he's a weirdo like me. The grandpa knows that he's listening or A Murphy's listening and like has a heartwarming conversation. It's like I messed up. Yeah. Like sometimes fathers are bad. And that was really good. Uh, there was a really funny moment where they're in the tiger operating room and uh, Eddie Murphy's wife like asked, do you really think he, or he, is he really talking that tiger? And his dad's like, yeah, of course he is. <laughs> like, yeah, he's, he's always been able, he's to, always talk been to, able to talk to animals. Of course. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so funny. Yeah. <laughs> Cause it's like, the way he says it, it's like, you're stupid. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, of course. Of course he can. <laughs> oh, uh, Paul Giamatti has just a uncredited appearance as uh, Blaine. Which is uh he's credited, isn't he? No, it says uncredited. You're right, it is uncredited. Yeah, and he's really funny. Wait, really? Yeah. He's his like nemesis. We'll have more to say on that in the comparison episode, I think. 
yeah on on the the nemesis the uh mental hospitals orchestrator all the mental so in the mental hospital there's there's a fun gag with uh ed the talking horse they're yeah, watch, they're watching the, uh, the, the t- on the tv they're watching like old episodes of it and the there's like two patients arguing on how he's how it's being done and Eddie Murphy is like trying to listen to see if the horse is actually talking right <laughs> it's like hold up nothing yeah. <laughs> it's really funny yeah. him like turning insane in that in the insane asylum is pretty good or the mental hospital because they like make his hair all wacky and he he like yeah do a real good job i talked about mark before i mentioned him at the beginning he's just like a he just wants money and there's a lot of fun scenes where Eddie Murphy's like trying to get advice from him. He's like, I'm really not your guy. I just want money. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. really funny. Just being a greedy. Yeah. Wanting to sell out. Yeah. And he's sell like out. very blatant about it and he doesn't hide it at all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he just wants the money. It's so extreme. It's extreme. And like, a like in the beginning, it's like believable. And then, at every time it just reinforces it more and more yeah it's just like oh this guy's whole personality is he wants to sell out for money yeah (laughs) and the joke is that he keeps just like being obvious about it not even hiding the fact that he doesn't care he's a good minor villain yeah (laughs) there aren't really any major villains no there's just like the, the impending buyout of the clinic that will lead to layoffs and you know they'll lose their community centric way um there's everyone thinking that john doolittle is insane and then there's him coming to terms with it himself that's like the i guess the the tiger's brain aneurysm i don't know if it's an aneurysm or it, it was like a clot, clot, blood but, clot but what's weird is like in the scene where they're operating on the tiger they like make it seem like the clot's happening in real time which is weird yeah well there's there's um they do they have like the scans and stuff yeah. that they're looking at and they don't really ever explain what's going on they show like a, a yeah spot. they're like something's Something, here that should gotta, be here yeah. and it's all the medicine is bad it is except for the utility treatments that he gives animals yeah. you know like giving the horse glasses and uh it's all funny yeah it is. it's all it, fun yeah and the other thing is he, he's Eddie Murphy's a good actor. He's confident in everything. Right. So, it, like, if you don't, like, examine it, it all works. Like, all the human hospital stuff. Too many butts. Too much butt stuff. Too many sex jokes. <laughs> that just don't... They don't, they don't yeah, need them. And none of the sex jokes were good. Yeah. It's not stuff that you're laughing at. Like, some of the butt jokes we did laugh at. Yeah. I don't think I laughed at any of the sex jokes. No, well, there was the dog that doesn't want to get neutered. That was kind of funny, but it was also, like, scary. <laughs> like, <laughs> sad. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> it was a minute too long. Yeah. And, Which made it more funny. The fact that it kept going on, like, you feel <laughs> awful. For, for, and then it's <laughs> undercut by a, a, another dog walks by, and it's insane. He's like, oh, hey, it, Ugh. and it the way Horn it's, dog yeah. yeah it's like are they trying to make me feel like yeah. basically it's the james stuff horny dragonfly except it's but horny, like horny animals horny pigeon horny dogs james would be funny if like he was going to get uh neutered and and then i feel sorry for him because of that but the way it's like instant <laughs> instantly undercut by like the the weird sex joke is like oh like he deserves it now like <laughs> like oh he's horny get rid of it <laughs> it's so weird that's also 90s a lot of like our, our complaints can just be chalked up like it was the times i mean sort of but then at the same time you look at the movie that we watched before it and it has all of the bathroom humor jokes it does right? there's less of them yeah, I mean, you still have birds pooping on stuff. You still have... There's much less. The BPM is not a resting heartbeat. <laughs> That's fair. Any final initial thoughts of watching Dr. Doolittle 1998? I think we need to do more double features. Like uh... The double feature format. Honestly, I was like, oh God, before we started it. Yeah, like, we movies. have to watch two movies. Not only do we have to watch Doolittle, but we have to watch Dr. Doolittle. But after doing it, the time flew. 
Yeah. It was nice that it was an 85 minute movie. You know, that made oh, it that we a lot never, more bearable. Perfect length. It made me not fear doing double features <laughs> so much. It'd be one thing if they were like three hour movies or, you know, two hour movies. I think it depends on what the double feature, because like what? The fact that they, the fact that they connect so well is helpful. So I like think. in, uh, in two weeks, we're doing Doolittle 2, or Dr. Doolittle 2. Right. And that's going to be fine, I guess. Uh, but, like, what other double feature would we do besides the, the 70s one? There aren't others that connect so well. The only one think. I could think of is Trolls World Tour. The, the, I mean, the other thing is that I don't really have a desire to watch. <laughs> no. <laughs> Just a double feature for a double feature's sake. So We do need to watch Trolls World Tour. Yeah, at some point we'll have to. It's it's nice though to uh, tiny diamond this money. <laughs> so we were like, like hip hop troll. Yesterday we were like quoting the trailer and we realized that we have pretty much the whole thing down. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that's wild to me <laughs> because it's one thing to have a movie that we but this trailer we've seen it probably half of the times. Not even. Not like even the, the opening to it we see probably yeah. half the times, but watching it all the way through we've only done like, like a, a couple, handful of times the time like that this movie came out though to be fair it, was it wasn't in, theaters it was in front yeah. of every single movie so i've probably seen the trailer a thousand times got anything non do do little related i'm trying to think uh yesterday we watched laguna beach which is a reality show from the early 2000s that is very bizarre the way reality TV is shot now is so far removed from this that, like, watching it is just weird. It's an, it's a weird experience. Been watching more Samurai Jack. <laughs> nice. Which is really good. And then more of that show I mentioned last week. Uh, God Troubles Me. I, I've watched the first season now all the way through, or the first s season and, like, maybe another episode. And it's really funny if you are a fan of, yeah, like I said, like Stephen Chow or like absurdist humor, I think it's definitely worth a watch. It had me, it has me laughing a lot. So definitely if you're into that sort of thing, I would watch it. I know you would like it, Frank. What about you? What have you been up to? I've been watching a soccer tournament called the soccer tournament, TST. I don't know if you're familiar with the basketball tournament. I'm not. It's TBT. The idea is you have a bunch of teams of players enter into this competition. The winner gets a million dollars. No one else gets anything. Okay. So it's like a World Cup style format. And it's a bunch of like retired former players. And there was like West Ham submitted a team. Dortmund submitted a team. Uh, and they got blown out. And it was really funny to see these European giants lose. That's, so that's really been kind funny. of fun. Like Clint Dempsey had a team that he put together and... Um, it was silly. Final Frank, this is the point where you bring it all back. Put this at the end. Okay. It's at the end. Yeah, we're at the end. Um would you would you recommend nineteen ninety eight Doctor Doolittle? Hesitantly, yes. I think I would. Did you enjoy it? I did. Is that because I've watched Doolittle twenty two weeks in a row? possibly possibly uh i would recommend this probably not for your young kids no it's definitely not a kids movie it's not a kids i yeah it's a 90s kids movie. <laughs> is it I'm, I'm trying to think of other 90s kids movies yeah it's, i feel like they're not yeah it's not it's not the best kids movie i do recommend it, it the pg-13 rating adhere to it yeah right I do enjoy it. I did enjoy it a lot. I really, really enjoyed it. Eddie Murphy's performance is worth it. And it makes me miss Eddie Murphy. I wish he was in more movies. He should really become a regular person again. Has he been in? He's been in stuff recently. He, he, he has been in stuff, like, sparingly. Oh, I should... I just... I looked at his IMDb and it, it was just reminded of something. I had a dream a couple nights ago. Okay. In preparation, <laughs> in excitement of... Uh, Eddie Murphy month. Okay. In my dream, we watched Dr. Doolittle, but as the movie started, we realized that Dr. Doolittle was actually a sequel to The Nutty Professor. And so we were, we were debating as we were sitting there whether or not we should 
go back and watch the nutty professor first so that we <laughs> have the prequel i viewed. can already tell you the nutty professor has high rpms like incredibly high rpms there's a, a scene in it that i remember where they're all sitting around a table farting and laughing that's cool <laughs> so i'm yeah uh my name is finn and i'm frank and this has been view it all uh where can you find us you can find us wherever you listen to podcasts or on YouTube, Speaking in Animals Productions. And if you want to reach us, you can reach us at drviewlittle uh, at gmail.com. That's dr.viewlittle at gmail.com. This has been a, a fun double feature start to Eddie Murphy month. He's talking to, speaking to animals, and they're understanding him in their own languages. That's a great summation. That should be the, uh, the that's the yeah the, in the review of except he's, I said is that he, quote he's not talking to them in their own languages no he's in not Eddie Murphy well it's unclear. he's speaking in English and he, they're understanding he, he's him. barking though he barks and he he chirps and in Eddie Murphy yes the the other characters reference that do they yeah there's like one scene where he's with his wife and he barks and it's turns into a sex thing he's like no i'm looking at you or something and then later they're like you got you have to stop chirping and barking but, but whenever he's talking at the lunch he's saying stuff in english yeah it's weird and he replies to animals in english yeah it's weird they like make and he goes i know you can understand me to it, the orangutan and then the orangutan speaks spanish that's a good scene uh, but there's reference to it that, yeah, he he is speaking in their languages, but there's also reference, or it doesn't make sense that he is. We should bring up, we should do real quick, who, <laughs> who was your favorite character? Uh, my favorite character was probably Mark. I thought he was hilarious. It, well, Eddie Murphy and then Mark. Okay. Yeah, I think that's right. Mark was the uh, fellow doctor who wants only money and yeah. to sell the clinic. He was a very good character. <laughs> the human characters in this are all so much better yeah <laughs> but we can get into that next week with our comparison episode bye 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 thanks eddie is there a quote is there a quote from this one is there anything any good quotes from this one i'm gonna jump i'm gonna jump off this sled. i'm gonna jump it would it would have been funny to watch a tiger jump five stories yeah that's a good one did we we didn't say his name did we who, the tiger? No, the dog. Lucky. Yeah, Norm MacDonald. Norm MacDonald, we said it? Okay. Because he's notable, I feel like. Yeah, he's very notable. Among the uh, comedy actors that are present across this. I feel like I hit all the big names. There's some I missed. Yeah. Uh, John Leguizamaro or whatever is one of the rats. There is... There's quite a few comedians who were really big when this came out if you want to keep listening you can stop right now but if you want to keep listening i'm gonna read through the cast right now eddie murphy dr john doolittle ozzy davis archer doolittle that's doolittle's dad oliver platt dr mark weller that's the bad guy who wants to sell the clinic peter boyle calloway yeah that's we, the guy who wants to buy the we clinic. forgot to mention peter boyle <laughs> yeah he's the one he's the, the guy who wants to buy the clinic from from the three doctors Richard Schiff, Dr. Gene Gino Rice. That's the good doctor who has qualms about qualms. No qualms here. There are no qualms here <laughs> about, so good. Uh, about wanting to sell the <laughs> clinic. Kristen Wilson as Lisa Doolittle. That's Doolittle's wife. Jeffrey Tambor as Dr. Fish. That's the veterinarian. Kyla Pratt as Maya Doolittle. That's Doolittle's youngest yeah daughter? youngest daughter this is insane we forgot to mention raven, raven simone. simone some raven simone it's just simone yeah why does she have so, the, why does she so have the accent on the e you don't remember that's so raven. i remember that's so raven why does she have an accent on the e if it's not simone i, I don't know all right she plays charisse aka paprika do a little uh stephen gilborn dr sam litvak i don't remember him oh he's the guy who Gives Doolittle a cat scan. Yeah. He's his Doolittle's friend who uh, lets him in to his facility to get a cat scan to see why he's, if he's going crazy because mm -hmm. he has like a, a, a brain issue. Um, Eric Dellums as Jeremy. He's the sidekick of the guy who wants to buy the clinic. Yeah. They're there at the meeting. June Christopher as Diane. I don't know. Yeah. Who, now you're getting to the non-characters. People you missed as far as humans are notable. 
are Paul Giamatti as Blaine, who's the head shrink. Um, Don Kalfa and Pruitt Taylor Vince are both like really notable character actors who are in a bunch of small bit parts throughout the 90s and early 2000s. They're very recognizable. They are the people talking to him about Dr. Ed. Oh, okay. In the, yeah, yeah. And then voice cast. The voice cast. Um, I'm on Wikipedia if you want me. <laughs> yeah, that might be a better place. Okay, uh, Norm MacDonald as Lucky. He's the main dog. Albert Brooks as Jacob. He's the Bengal tiger. Who has the uh, br- the uh, headaches. Chris Rock as Rodney. He's the guinea pig. Rennie Santoni as rat number one. John Leguizamo. Um, Leguizamo. I can't say his last name. He says rat Leguizamo. number two. Leguizamo. 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 Julie Kavner as female pigeon. Gary Shandling uh, as male pigeon. He was in the Larry Sanders show, which is a pretty good HBO show. Notably, Julie Kavner was Marge Simpson. By oh, way. yeah. Uh, Ellen DeGeneres as the prologue dog. <laughs> uh, Brian Doyle Murray as old beagle. He is in a bunch of... He's Bill Murray's uh, brother. Is he... Was he uh, old Beagle? Who is that? I don't remember the Beagle. It must be one of the dogs in the prison. Yeah, or something. Phil Proctor as drunk monkey. The drunk monkey, alcoholic monkey is. Uh, I think he has a bigger role in the second Doolittle. Mm. I believe he runs around more. I think that's where you remembered a monkey in the yard. Uh, Gilbert Gottfried is in it. Uh, Jenna Elfman. Gilbert Gottfried is a dog who wants a ball. It's just a joke. Oh, yeah. There's a lot more. Jenna Elfman is the owl who wants a uh, a name that who has a stick stuck in her wing. Might recognize as Paul Rubens is a rat coon. That's Pee Wee Herman. We're in the animals that have single lines yeah. now, which are sort of like the animal inserts of. And pretty much all of these people are comedians, and we could go yeah. through it, but I don't recognize a lot of them until I click on them. Yeah, we can stop there. We got through the. Uh, we hit the main cast there. Okay. Okay. Goodbye. That's all. Oh no, it's a big stinky. <laughs> no, 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 no. There are no qualms here. We have no qualms. That was probably my favorite line. I think. That, that was a really that good I, line. Now that I remembered it, after <laughs> accidentally saying qualms, that going like, oh no, yeah. No. I think that he delivered all of my favorite lines, actually. Who? Yeah. Mark. Yeah, Mark is so His funny. lines are all really good. <laughs> Eddie Murphy's having a heart to heart. He's like, no, I think you want Gene for this. Gene, can you come in here? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> They play they play off each other really well. <laughs> they really do. Okay, bye bye.